Good witness gone bad. The second half was a shit show. That's interesting. I'm wondering, she clearly has her phone back. We're going to start seeing updates in the next couple of minutes about what happened towards the end of the day. Currently, it is now 4 o'clock or 4.08 in L.A., which means usually around about 4 o'clock to 5, the, the judge up to his or her discretion could allow and dismiss you know, the jury for the day and also tell witnesses and, you know, uh, the, the prosecution or the defense attorneys to continue their cross or direct the next particular day. So I'm thinking everything was completed today. I'm not sure if they're done with Kelsey, but it's clear that Kelsey has. Hey, let me ask you this, this question. And I guess yeah. I was trying to get to this when we were talking about the whole Megan Tory shit. Sure. Yo, the prosecutor is in court saying, yo, you were not supposed to say that. You told us things differently. Yeah. How how much of a hit? Because put it like this, if you have an informant or if you if you present a case to a to a well, it wouldn't be a DA, it would be a AUSA, right? Um yeah. and 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 now you've presented a case and they decided they're going with it and you have given them some of the confidential informers and other things and maybe yeah. other people who are down to testify on the behalf of the US government and you guys know what the game plan is to go in court. OK, you're probably going to be called because you're probably the case agent. And yep. um, now the particular witness is saying exactly everything opposite from what the interview they were recorded saying. What yep. the fuck does that do? Because this is what's happening with Kelsey right now. I'll tell you this, bro. Um, She just saved Tory Lane's ass because what I, she's I, I said, I said basically so done. Is she's created reasonable doubt for the defense is what she's basically done. Um, at this point in the trial, I'd be amazed. I'd be floored if Tori was found guilty because her testimony has now created doubt to the point where we're not sure if Tori pulled the trigger anymore and yep. shot Meg. And then the witness is not being credible, you know, between Meg being drunk, Kelsey being drunk. Uh, Tory being drunk, but he doesn't have to worry because he's not going to take the stand. It doesn't matter. He's the defendant. Hey, right? wait, hold on. Let me ask you a question about that. I yeah. thought if Kelsey creamed it, when I mean creamed it, like fucking, yo, actually, yeah, I have been, I haven't talked to Meg, but everything Meg said was right. And, and I back her up completely. Yes, she might have lied, but I understand why she lied because we did, we were scared of the police killing black people, all that type of stuff. But Meg was right. Tory did shoot it, and I saw it. I said without the fourth person, which is Daquan, which is um, yeah. which is a driver. I said maybe Tory got to take the stand. At this point, I say Tory should not take the stand. Never. The defendant should never ever take the stand. Okay. It, it, I, I've, I've rarely seen it happen, but nine out of ten times, no competent defense attorney is ever going to put their def uh their their client on the stand because. What happens is it opens up the prosecution to ask them a bunch of questions that where they might where they could potentially incriminate themselves or fuck themselves up. And you don't want your, your client being cross-examined by the prosecution. You never want that. Mm. Well, I thought it was going to be, hey, you could only save your ass by having. To so, for example, if, if Kelsey came on because Meg said nothing about what happened at the party. She's not speaking to her mindset, intoxication. She's, she's not speaking to a lot of things that is going to affect how people will view the narrative. If Kelsey exactly. came and, and if Kelsey came and gave very limited information without the the driver, I, I said Tori might have to take the stand to try to really flush this thing out to try to drive the narrative that is that is defense attorneys are trying to drive. But I ain't gonna lie, Kelsey just did it. Thank you, Kelsey. Yeah for him and, and i mean she created that reasonable doubt and and yeah man if i was let's say i was the detective on this case right i was the investigator because the state fed we have the same pretty much rules of, cr of criminal procedure um i would be fucking losing my shit if i was the prosecution i would literally be like holy fuck we just lost this trial because a witness that was supposed to come in that was one of our witnesses basically took the fifth on the fucking stand and admitted to lying to us 
which immediately disqualifies everything. Like, it, it, yeah, dude, it, it, it significantly hurt their case, especially since she was a prosecution witness. And my thing is, I'm I'm also kind of shocked at how incompetent these ADAs are because in my head, Me too. like, okay, y'all probably did a sidebar. You brought it to the side. Yo, listen, we're going to give you full immunity. We need you to testify. But I would tell her before you testify, what the fuck are you going to say? <laughs> right? And, that, and, and, and if. And if she was going to say some bullshit like, well, I lied to y'all, I, I, you know, I, I lied to y'all and I, you know, I, I had to, uh, I basically, I felt scared for myself and for, uh, which is basically what she said. I felt scared for myself. I had to protect myself. So I lied to y'all. Like I would have been as a prosecutor, I would have been like, uh, uh, fuck. But I guess they were probably stuck because they had probably already signed the immunity agreement. So they couldn't do shit to her that, anyway. Hey, okay, okay, all right, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna present. This is a kooky theory. This is only academic saying this. I have zero information. I'm just trying to use. I'm using common sense. And I know some people think that. Act. Why do you seem like you're informed on legal stuff? I've never been a lawyer. I've never. I've never even had the qualifications or had the experience. Even if like someone like Myron, but I'm going off someone who's seen a bunch of these things. And obviously, you know. Like I'm definitely interested in law, but no way qualif qualified to be in that type of um, um, realm. Here is a theory. So I'm coming up with theories. So I'm gonna give you this theory, and you can tell me. Act not. I don't think that holds water. Tell me if it holds water. I think Tor um, I think right, Tori. Right. I think I think Tori knew that Kelsey was gonna do this, and I think Meg. I think Kelsey was very careful in what she said. Because, and I think they basically did a play on the prosecutor to get immunity and then go against everything the prosecutor said. It makes no sense that you would get immunity and then not say what the prosecutor thought you were going to say. You got you got immunity, then said, "I lied to the prosecutor," which now they can't they can't lie to you for. Well, I don't know if that would be a, a fun. A false police report or anything like that. They can't. They can't charge you for any of that. But she yeah. was also careful enough to to say, "Oh well, I didn't grab anything." She never admitted mm -hmm. to anything, and she never said that she seen Tori with anything. Essentially, she said she saw nothing. Yeah, nothing. And then I also heard uh, from a couple outlets that she was the one that shot, or she was the potential. She was probably she was the shooter. Mm. Would explain. Why she didn't want to talk, yeah. you know what I mean? Be because it, it, because not only is she incriminating herself for impeding an investigation, lying to to police, um, you know, obstruction of justice, she also could get hit with you know attempted murder. Facts. So, hey, hey, listen, hey, I hate don't, to don't mean to interrupt you guys. Dennis um, Byron's on. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I was going to that real quick. And Myron, I think you should be able to hear it through here. I'm, I'm putting it on screen now. from the front. Yeah. I got to dip on a little bit, she but did not go ahead. See who shot Megan. Remember, yesterday, Megan said Kelsey didn't shoot her. <laughs> Kelsey today said she did not see who shot Megan. Here's a problem. Back in September, Kelsey was interviewed by the prosecutor as well as her investigator, and they recorded her statement. In that statement, she said the opposite. Why does this matter right now? She, she, you can view it a number of ways. She came in this morning saying that she was suffering from postpartum depression as well as she had a death in the family and she had a child that was sick. On every, almost every occasion, when the prosecutor asked her about a certain instant, an incident, she couldn't remember. She doesn't remember. She had to be reminded with the prior statement she made in September. This is interesting. Remember, M Megan said Kelsey did not shoot her. Today, Kelsey said she didn't see who shot Megan. You guys are following me here? Are you following Pause for a second, chat. He should come back. Hold on. Follow me. And while Y'all got to support Unk, man. He needs some some better internet, man. He in the field. 
My boy got his. This is really going to hinge on the credibility of Megan, Kelsey, and I don't know at this point should uh, Tory even take the the stint piece of evidence or several pieces of evidence. Remember, testimony today is different than what occurred in when the the prosecutors interviewed. Uh, Kelsey back in September. Uh, if Megan is saying Kelsey didn't do it, Kelsey is saying she didn't see who did it, and she also said she didn't shoot Megan. That leaves two people in the vehicle. There are two people remaining in the vehicle. You can't forget this is the testimony from yesterday from from Megan and then what we have today from Kelsey. Does this create a shadow of doubt? Does this create a shadow of doubt? Shout out XQC. That's the big question. Yo, at this point, man, I'm. I wouldn't be surprised if we have if, to watch what happens on cross examine. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. If, if, Definitely. Is that people, I don't know if people know this, but Megan, this chick definitely like there was hair and nails today, found all over the today, street, and tomorrow is going to be even more. I you heard that, Ak? Meg must have whipped her ass if she shot her. No cap. Yeah, I mean, they they were fist fighting. It's in the police report that you know witnesses saw them fighting on the street, um, and you know from from that perspective, you could you know there is a potential for her to be angry and why she would shoot at Meg after the fact. Yo, act you're muted right now. I agree. Hey, 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 I, I agree. Hey, listen. So, so Unk, which is uh, Mr. Dennis Byron, I think he was saying that Kelsey might have to be brought back tomorrow. It looked like they only got through prosecution um stuff today. They 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 didn't get through um anything to do with um defense. The defense. However, here's the funny part about it. She's treating the prosecutors and giving giving the win to the defense. So the defense really needs to just be there like, "Hey, listen, let's just keep exposing Meg." I I predict that they that the defense won't even press her on on the shooting. They're just going to ask about Meg Meg personality and Meg being a liar. Because yeah. she's already like said the things that's created and muddied the waters. Oh, I've never seen Tory shoot. Like it, it's a prosecutor's job to say who got who shot, and she she did a good job of defending it. This is again, I know I know we're not in court, and I know we're not in court, but I have to be honest. If I'm going off just everything I've heard, how could you in sound mind? And being a, a a astute individual, actually deliberate with eleven other people and say Tory is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So far, and no, these can't. are the star witnesses. These are the star witnesses. You can't, bro, and uh, you can't. And the other thing too is that all the all the defense has to do now because. Kelsey made the job a lot easier for them. Is now they're just going to discredit Meg's character. They're going to discredit her um, her ability to tell the truth and be uh, you know f uh, forthright. I mean, I, they probably I think they annihilated they they, pro they beat her up on the Gail interview. I don't know why the fuck she did that interview, that Gail Knight interview where she said, "Oh no, me and Tori didn't have sex, etc." The Gail King She's interview where she was just lying all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah. So. She's already shown herself to be fairly untrustworthy. And then the fact that Kelsey basically went back on what she said before and can't positively identify the potential shooter and saying, oh, I'm taking a fifth, which implicates that she may have been the shooter herself. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's it's a clusterfuck. It's a clusterfuck. Yo, this is very interesting. And by the way, uh, salute to Megan Cunningham. She, she just sent out a couple of tweets. They said that uh, Judge Hereford ended trial early as the DA is pressing Kelsey about the aftermath of the shooting and Tory's un uh, uh, apologetic call. Her meeting with him, and it wasn't going anywhere. Uh, I guess they were asking her, it just wasn't going anywhere. She'll be back 
for a continued direct. Keep in mind, if you guys don't know, every witness that comes up, if it's a prosecutor's witness, they get to go first, and then the defense gets to cross. We're still with the prosecution setting out their case, so these are their witnesses, and they haven't even finished their direct in the first day, and nothing looks to be going for the prosecutor. Which is this, a bad sign. This is hell. That's a very bad sign. This is hell. And the reason why I was saying maybe this is a play at hand, I think Tory's lawyers are going to play it very perfectly and not the way how, they're trying to press her. They're trying to press her. They're frustrated. They're looking at the judge. Judge, could you let her answer? Yo, we already gave her immunity deal. Why is she trying to call the fifth? What she say she don't remember? Hey, we got some. We have the interview where she said differently here. She said now she's saying she lied. She has them flustered. Yeah. Yeah. The, the defense. This is what I think happened. They had the sidebar. Hey, why are you invoking the fifth? What the hell's going on here? We didn't talk about this before. Oh, no, no. Listen, just understand that if I say some things, I might end up going to I might incriminate myself. OK, cool. We'll give you an immunity deal. They probably went, rushed, drafted up some kind of immunity deal Facts. from the district attorney who had to be the top one to sign it. Give her that immunity deal. Her defense counsel looked it over. OK, this suffices. OK, Kelsey, you can go ahead and take the stand. Mind you, they don't know what she's going to say at this point because she signed the immunity deal. After but hold on, deal, but but they think she's going to repeat and probably uh, elaborate on what she said in interviews prior yes. to this. They were hoping. They were hoping she would admit to maybe some bullshit like, "Yeah, I punched Meg in the face and I kicked her and I spit on her," right? And, and uh, okay, cool. We could take that. All right, whatever, right? But I don't think they thought that she was going to like full on like she was going to omit all this other stuff. Like, oh, yeah, I lied to y'all during the interviews or whatever. They're over here probably thinking, oh, we're going to give her immunity for some stuff that probably wasn't that big a deal or isn't going to significantly hurt our case. But once she went on there and said, okay, I lied to y'all, blah, 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 that's when they were probably like, oh, shit. Myron, but you tell me what you think. And, and and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not accusing um, the city of L.A. of being vindictive or anything like this. But I believe yeah. that she should probably move out of L.A. County if she's, if she's living in L.A. County after this. Again, you have fucked over the district attorney in a very highly publicized case, which yeah. you were pretty much a, a, a you are the co-star witness. And now if you granted, they might not be able to charge you for anything related to that night. But if you think that yeah. there isn't some type of axe to grind. You're fucking up. Yeah, they're gonna find something to pin on her after this shit. Might have not nothing to do with this, but they're gonna get her on some. So they're gonna start looking at her bank accounts. This bitch is involved in credit card fraud. They're gonna do something, bro. I mean, this was a big L. If I was the prosecution, if I was the prosecutor and the case detective on this, I would literally be like, "Holy fuck, we might have to go to Tory and just give him a plea deal." This is ridiculous. Well, hey, between me and you, just, I heard that you see that that late charge. They tried to give him that as a plea deal early on before they uh, added it. But even if he just wanted this to end, let's say he wanted to take it, that still carries a year and a day, and that triggers deportation. He can't take exactly. it. So, he can't so, take so, so what could they give him now that he could take? What could they give him? He'd have to take, uh, and I used to do immigration, so I know this. He would have to take, uh, he would have to take a misdemeanor that doesn't involve a crime of moral interpretude. Oh, you're right. There's not but, but like that. What would satisfy the public hunger for justice that they could give him that could that could also like what would that charge be? They want people want a charge of at least him discharging the firearm. They definitely want a charge of him or a conviction really of him um shooting Meg, right? And if they can't get either one of those, you do you think they're gonna be happy there's with no, like there's no crime? That's going to appease the public while simultaneously being able to allow him to stay in the United States due to his foreign national uh, status. And there's and, none. And, and, and that's why I, I talked to a lot of people about that charge. I heard if he had took the plea that they offered, it still goes into deportation. Let me play this real quick from someone else who was in court, and I want you to react to it afterwards. Here we go. We uh, are done. Kelsey is not done. She will be back tomorrow for another day of testimony. In fact, the opening... 
direct examination by the prosecution of Kelsey started in the morning. It's still not finished. It's going to continue to tomorrow and then we'll get cross-examination. Let me catch you up on what happened. Kelsey testified that everything that she had told prosecutors and investigators before suggesting that Tori had shot at Meg was a lie, that she did it. Why? To protect herself. Why was she protecting herself? She didn't want to incriminate herself. And then there was this back and forth exchange that just kept going on. They were saying the same thing to each other. I don't know why the judge allowed it. The prosecutor's like, why? She's like, to protect myself. Why? To protect yourself from what? And she just kept saying, to protect myself. Finally, they moved on. The prosecutor's story basically comes down to this. They're introducing evidence that Kelsey seems to deny, but then doesn't seem to deny as far as Tori making offers to say, hey, I'll give you this money when they're in the car and the police are coming up behind them and there's a helicopter overhead. Tori's like, yeah, I'll give you a million dollars. Don't say anything. And she's like, I didn't take that. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then there's another meeting that happens later on between Tori and her. And she sort of, she says, I didn't take any money. But she at the same time doesn't deny that offers were made. The other part that prosecutors are using and hanging their hat on are messages after the shooting where uh, Kelsey is communicating with other people, including a key text message where Kelsey says, Tori shot Meg. That was sent to Meg's security guard. For the cross-examination, what I'm looking and expecting for the defense to do is basically pin Kelsey as the shooter. They're going to start with the gunshot residue. They're going to say she's got gunshot residue on her. And then they're going to start pointing out to all, and there are so many, I don't even think you can cover them all, of the inconsistencies in the stories between Meg and Kelsey. One of the biggest inconsistencies that I can't make any sense of is Meg says that she was out of the car alone. Kelsey says, no, we were both out of the car. She said that today at court, we were both out of the car when the shots happened. Kelsey vehemently denied that she saw the sh any type of shooting. And she kind of kept saying that there were just gunshots. By the way, not to pause it because it's not over, um, but I am pausing. Anyway, Tory's lawyers are going to dig on that, if you ask me, and then get into the new narrative that Meg and Kelsey were fighting. The prosecutor has admitted that. And that's going with what Meg has said, that there was never a fight. And what Meg has said also in a Gail King interview, that she never put hands on anyone. But I believe that tomorrow, when we get to the cross, Tory, defense attorney, is going to bring out to say, well, you, you, okay, so now we know you were outside the car when the gunshots were being fired. Um, what were you doing outside the car? And if she said that her and Meg had a physical altercation, it tells a completely fucking different story than what Meg and even the prosecutors have said so far. And it's going to be up to the jurors. Let me finish playing this and then I want to get Myron um, um, to chime in. Here we go. Shots that went off. She did not admit how. I think a juror is going to go one of two ways. A juror is going to look at this and say she's been paid off. She's lying for Tory. Tory is a criminal mastermind guilty. I think a juror might look at it and say she's trying to protect herself from incriminating herself about being involved in this shooting. And so she's lying and maybe she's the shooter. And that's enough for me to say reasonable doubt. The prosecution hasn't met their burden. We shall see. This case is not ending anytime soon. Stay tuned. We are done. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Th basically, Kelsey did have to work for the defense already. What I what I see is I, I agree that um, they're 100% going to attack her and try to come with the theory that she was potentially the shooter. The fact that her DNA was on the gun and the fact that also um, she has gun sh gunshot residue on her makes her a potential shooter, which is all the defense needs to do. Wait, wait, hold, hold on though, Marin. I yeah. think they won't attack her. She's already made the case when she's not even getting crossed that she doesn't know Tori's the shooter or she doesn't know. Who the sh she has a name. They, I think they only would attack her if she names Tori. I thought she was going to name Tori. Now that she didn't name Tori, all, all they have to do is basically just contextualize these other things because, again, it's going to look too obvious if they're questioning her about the exact event to say. Because imagine a question like, well... You you didn't see Tori shooting her. You didn't shoot her. There's bullets that went off. What do you think that happened? Well, they're, gonna have to, they're gonna have to ask her, did you shoot? And then go with that narrative that she potentially was the shooter or the other guy. But the other guy clearly isn't because no one gives a fuck. He's not even at this trial, which actually is kind of strange to me that he's not at this trial. But it's definitely strange. In order for them to exonerate their defendant, aka Tory Lanes, 
they need to have a potential or probable shooter. So the only other person, right? This they're not gonna. Here's the thing. This is what they're gonna do. They're not gonna say, "Yo, Kelsey, you were the shooter." What they're gonna do is they're gonna paint it in a light where there's no other way except she was the shooter. That's exactly what they did on the Wine W Melly case, right? So on the Wine W Melly case, what they basically did was, "Yo, all these facts, cell phone, uh, we got the cell phone uh, location data. We have." Conflicting evidence. We have uh, gunshot trajectories that don't match up with the wounds. You guys are saying that you got hit with a with a, a drive by, etc. They didn't necessarily say, "Yo, why W. Melly shot him," but they, but all the evidence it shows that there was no other way but that Y. W. Melly shot and killed his friends. I support. Uh, I propose that they're gonna try to do that where they won't necessarily grossly say you were the shooter, Kelsey, but they're gonna go ahead and make it where it's almost undeniable. That she was the shooter. Oh, so you didn't see Tori shoot. Okay, cool. Um, so did uh you know the, the evidence shows that there was gunshot residue on your hand as well. And then they might ask her a question, can you maybe tell us how that is possible? Did you hold the gun at all? Did you touch the gun? And she's gonna say, Oh, I don't remember touching the gun. Well, your DNA was on it. So they're gonna pin her in a corner where the the, the jury, remember, they can't really go ahead and make assertions. All they can do is put her in a corner. And let the jury make that assertion for them. That's what I propose they're going to do. They're going to make it where they're not going to accuse her of being the shooter, but they're going to put her in a position where it looks like she was the shooter, which is more than enough to go ahead and prove that Tori wasn't the actual shooter. That's what I think they're going to do. I think they're going to be friendly with her at nice in the beginning, right? Build that rapport. Get her to discredit Meg's testimony, right? Yep. Get her to show that Meg is incredible. After that's done... Right then, they're gonna start going tr through trying to discredit the text messages. Oh, well, in this text message, you said that he shot Tori, but you already have proven already. Was this before or during the interviews that you had with the police? Okay, well, you lied to the police earlier, as you stated. So, would it be possible that these text messages were also lied about because we knew that Meg's legal team was on the case from the onset of this thing, and they were intercepting text messages as they were coming in? Did you say that as a way to cover your situation? They're gonna go deep into it, man, because now that she said, oh. Uh, I I lied to the police. Now they can now the defense can attack her text messages and say you put those up to purport a certain type of situation, uh, so to make it look like Tori was the shooter, knowing that the text messages were going to be used as as evidence. Because remember, in day one of the trial, people people pretty much knew that uh, Meg's legal team was on this literally like five hours after the shooting, five to nine hours after the shooting, the legal team was already on it. So. The defense can go ahead and say, oh, that text message thread was set up to paint the story knowing that her legal team was on it. So I think they're going to paint her in a corner where the jury's going to think, yo, she could have been the fucking shooter. They might not grossly say it, but that's what I pro that's what I think they're going to do to protect their own client, of course. I'm agreeing with you. I personally think that there's a lot of, um, a lot of doubt that's been created so far. And I'm wondering how much more... Um, how much more people are going to testify for the for the uh, prosecutor? Because I'm not going to lie, the two main witnesses are L's. Because Meg went on there crying, just being emotional, right? Which is what witnesses are supposed to do when they're yep. the victim. Cool, she did her job, but Kelsey fucked it up for them. She's created that reasonable doubt for Tori. That's what she's effectively yep. done. And I always thought this this might have could have happened. But well, I will say this: I do got to run, bro. Okay. Uh, we got we got to do our, our our joint right now. No, of course, of course, uh, of course. Uh, uh, do you mind if I plug my stuff real quick before I run no, out of here? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, guys, Fresh Fit Podcast. Check us out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're gonna do a breakdown right now. Fed eighteen eleven. If you guys want to see more crime stuff like this, Act, I'll jump back on with you uh, tomorrow when more information comes out on this, and we can go deep on it. Yo, no I'm I'm here every day. You're welcome to come any day, anytime, and use any content. Obviously, you feel me? Yo, same here on my side, man. You already know it. And uh, let me know if you need any of that other. I still have all the Tory stuff here with the police reports and the uh, you know the statements and the court docs. So if you need any of that stuff refreshed over to you, just let me know. Of course, thank you, brother. Hey guys, academics, take it easy, bro. All right, definitely, man. Peace. Holy shit, chat.